today I'm going to be reading The Christmas Boot by Lisa Wheeler. Deep in the forest on a Christmas morning, Hannah Graybrother gathered bundles of kindling wood. For her, this day was no different from any other. As she went about her chores, she chatted to the forest. She talked to the mountains, but mostly she spoke to herself. Burr, she said to the mountain, will this winter ever be over? It chills my bones. The mountain didn't answer. Her arms were nearly full when, just past the spruce grove, she spotted something. In the snow, deepest black upon purest white, lay a boot. Glory be, Hannah exclaimed to the forest, who could have lost this? The forest remained silent. And since her feet were fully freezing, and since it looked to be such a nice boot, she slipped her rag-wrapped left foot deep within it. Ah, Hannah said, that does feel nice. It surely must have, for when she slid her tiny foot into the very large boot, it suddenly took the shape and size of Hannah's own foot. The boot fit perfectly. Hannah headed back to her ramshackle cabin, limping her way through the snow. Her warm left foot stepped nimbly as her cold right foot struggled to keep up. This boot was quite a find, Hannah said to the walls of her cabin. Where do you suppose it came from? The walls did not reply. As she slipped into bed that night, she stared at the boot and said, I only wish I had your mate. Then she drifted off to sleep. Come on, boot, Hannah said the next morning. Time to get to work. But as she slid her legs over the side of the bed, she didn't see just one black boot. She saw two. Glory be, Hannah said to the right boot. How did you get here? The boot didn't say. And then Hannah Grayweather placed both of her feet into those warm black boots. They fit most comfortably. As she went about her wood gathering, Hannah had a spring in her step that hadn't been there for years. She danced in the spruce grove, skipped along the creek bed, and even made snow angels on the hillside. Her feet felt wonderfully warm. That night, Hannah placed her boots next to her bed and marveled at her good fortune. Such a magnificent find, she said to the left boot. Who could have lost such a treasure as you? The boot stood silent. No matter, said Hannah. I've made good use of you. If only I had mittens as toasty warm, I would be the happiest woman in the world. In the morning, tucked neatly set inside each boot was a bright red mitten. Glory be, Hannah said to the boots. What form of magic is this? The boots wouldn't tell. She put on the mittens, and just like the boots, they fit perfectly. If the boot is magic, Hannah said to the mittens, will it give me more? Will it give me a fluffy feather bed? A fabulous feast? A big fancy house? The mittens stayed mute. I suppose, I suppose that is too much to ask, said Hannah. I best get about my chores. In the woods that day, Hannah's feet and hands felt equally fine. She climbed in the mount she climbed the mountain trail, gathered chestnuts, and built a towering snowman. As she strolled home, an amazing sight met her eyes.
where her ramshackle cabin had been stood a big fancy house. Luscious smells drifted from the open doorway. Glory be, Hannah said to the house. How did you get here? The house didn't say. Inside, Hannah wandered from room to room, taking in all the loveliness of it all. She tasted the fabulous foods she snuggled in the fluffy feather bed. Somehow, it didn't seem fully real. It didn't seem fully right either. Unlike the wonderful boots and mittens, the house didn't seem to fit Hannah. Suddenly, there, became, there came a knock-knock-knock on the fine front door. Who could it be? Hannah asked the feather bed. I've never had company. The bed stayed silent. She opened the door cautiously, peeking through the crack between the door and the wall. She spied a man with a very white beard. He wore a red hat, a red suit, and one black boot. May I help you? Hannah asked the man. Yes, he answered. I think you may have found something of mine. Hannah was happily surprised to hear that the sound of another voice. She opened the door at once. Glory be, she said. Come in, come in. You must be freezing. Just my left foot, said the man with a twinkle in his eye. Hannah looked down from her own booted feet. Yes, she said. I do believe I have something that belongs to you. She fixed the man of cup of tea. She served him chest, chestnuts, and they talked about everything and nothing deep into the night. Now, she said, I best give you your boot so you can be on your way. When the man placed his large left foot into the boot, it took on the shape and size of his very own foot. Ah, he said, that does feel nice. At once, the big fancy house, the fabulous feast, and the fluffy feather bed disappeared. Even her right boot and mittens were gone. I'm sorry, said the man. No need, said Hannah. It is as it should be. The boot didn't belong to me. But I enjoyed it while I was here. Is there anything I can give you? Asked the man. What do you truly desire? What I truly desire is someone to talk to, said Hannah. But warm boots and a pair of mittens would be mighty fine. The man in the red suit winked, and suddenly there appeared a dainty, dainty pair of red boots and bright green mittens. Thank you, sir, Hannah said as she walked him to the door and bid him goodbye. I will make fine use of them. That night, as she climbed into bed, Hannah said good night to her new mittens and boots. Arf, the left boot answered. What? Hannah cried. She peeked inside the boot. Two eyes peered back at her. Arf, arf, she heard again. Then she reached into the boot and pulled out a wiggly puppy into her arms. Thank you, Hannah whispered to the night sky as she held her new friend close. The night sky answered. Merry Christmas, Hannah. Merry Christmas.
Lindsay and 